Hello, welcome all of you today to our NHS induction ceremony. Uh, my name is Brian Stevens. I'm very fortunate to serve as your um, child's advisor. And we're going to get started with the program here in just a second. So the first thing we'd like to do, if I can get their attention. No, we did not rehearse this, if you can, haven't seen this. All right, I'd like to introduce our present NHS members. If they could come in and take their seats, that would be great. Let's have a round of applause for the NHS present members. Now I'd like to introduce our 2023, 2024, 2025 inductees. They'll be sitting in these first rows. They'll be led by our chapter officers, President Ethan Woodcox, Vice President Stephen Koval, Secretary Jillian Hover, Treasurer Ilsa Katz, and Historian Heidi Katz. I'd like to introduce you this year's inductees. No, you go down. Set them down. Keep going. All right, with that said, I'd like to introduce our chapter president. Why don't we give a round of applause to Mr. Ethan Woodcox. We're going to start our induction ceremony today by honoring our two citizens of the year this year. And they are awarded for their service and leadership in the community. Our first citizen of the year is Charles Scott. Joining educators, community leaders, a victim's rights advocate, and a local jurist, the Cold War National Honor Society recognizes a true local hero who has served as a tireless advocate for Branch County veterans over the last two decades. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Charles Scott as our 2023 Citizen of the Year. Born in DeKalb, Illinois, Charles began to serve his country in the Army at the age of 18. His 13 years of active duty during the time in the Army, Charles received five Army Accommodation Medals, four Army Achievement Medals, and four Good Conduct Medals. Charles moved into the area of recruiting, winning the Gold Badge Award in 1989. By the time Charles left active duty, Charles had achieved the rank of Staff Sergeant. The Army also helped Charles socially, as it was there where he met his bride, Victoria. The Scots have three children, Virginia, 
Jacqueline and Braden, Brandon, along with two grandchildren, Theodora and Arthur. After receiving his undergraduate degree in psychology and criminal law in 1997, Charles relocated to Coldwater in 2002 and received his commission as the head of the Branch County University Veterans Administration in 2003. Charles has served in this capacity ever since. In his over 20 years of service as a service officer in this community, he has helped countless veterans and their families, from helping a daughter of a World War I veteran achieve, receive their father's Purple Heart to the numerous everyday heroes in this community. Charles is a grateful for being able to help all of these individuals and their families. However, tonight, our gratitude is extended towards Charles, a great family man, a distinguished veteran, and a terrorist advocate for Branch County veterans. Charles deserves our praise and appreciation. Please join me in recognizing Mr. Charles Scott as the 2023 National Honor Society Citizen of the Year. I want to thank everybody and, and all everybody that, uh, that that made it here, especially all the honor society. Um, that what, what you guys to, to get where you're at is unbelievable. My son Brandon, he's an honor society. And I'm very proud of him, and I'm very proud of you. And and if anybody knows anybody that's in the military or or what have you, have them come and see me. I'm right here next door to the Branch County Sheriff's Department. So thank you very much. Thank you. When selecting recipients for the annual Ural Citizens of the Year Award, the National Honor Society looks for candidates that fulfill the highest standards of service and leadership, qualities reflected in the pillars of NHS. For people, few people have fulfilled these standards to the extent of this year's next recipient of the Citizen of the Year Award, Mr. James Billsborough. Mr. Billsborough. Mr. Billsborough has been a leader and servant to the community for decades. He taught at Coldwater Community Schools for 34 years and acted as a substitute teacher when the need arose. He taught social studies at Lake Middle School for 25 years and American history at Coldwater High School for nine years. Mr. Billsborough, known fondly to the numerous athletes he's coached as Coach B, coached for nearly 50 years. During that time, he spent five years coaching basketball at Lake Middle School and 48 years coaching cross country and track at Coldwater High School. In 1982, he established the middle school cross-country program, and in 1984, he established the girls' cross-country program at the high school. As a cross-country and track coach, Mr. Billsborough has played a role in the success of many athletes at the conference, the regional, and state levels, helped every athlete he has coached improve in their events, and overseen many improvements to the track facilities. Mr. Billsborough has further served Coldwater Community Schools as a substitute bus driver since 2016. He also served as the president of Branch County Democrats for four years and is currently serving on Coldwater's Zoning Board of Appeals. For his years of service and leadership in the community, I am proud to present the Citizen Union Award to Mr. Jim Billsborough. Years ago, I... Um was influenced by a number of people, primarily coaches, and uh, I often thought, how could I repay those coaches for all they did for me? And I decided I couldn't repay all those coaches, and so I decided I, what I would have to do is do the same for my athletes that they did for me. And so I'm just gonna read off some of these coaches' names that had an influence on me. And you may know some of these coaches or have heard of them. I just want you to know that they left a lasting imprint on me. Floyd Eby, Pat Lau, Fred Hobart, Doug Mittmester, Neil Brown, Hugh Hansel, Al Scorfar. I probably left out someone, and you may have had an outstanding coach that I didn't mention. But because of those coaches, I have had a wonderful career at Coldwater High School. Thank you very much.
Brian Stevens, members of the faculty, parents, and students, welcome to the 2020-23 National Honor Society Induction Ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize these, those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being in, do, inducted as new members of the NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you two are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. Throughout the year, members of our chapter serve as role models for other students, in addition to the strong academic records which establish the eligibility for membership. Our chapter members are leaders in many student organizations, and we serve our schools and community through many activities, including our annual turkey trot, our cake auction, and um, next week, next weekend on Saturday, we'll be course managing at the Walk-A-Mile. We are proud of this record of accomplishment and welcome these new members who be bring new energy and support to our continuing work at, as NHS members. We will now begin our induction ceremony properly with the pinning. So I will call each inductee's name. They will come forward, please, with their parents and receive their pin. Their inductee will then be pinned and then will be seated in the rows behind us. Starting with the class of 2023, Rowan Etwain. Welcome, Rowan. Jasmine Phantom. Welcome, Jasmine. Sydney Gallup. Welcome, Sydney. <laughs> Julia Kirk. Welcome, Julia. Carly Knisley. Welcome, Carly. Applause 
Shakura McQuitt. Welcome, Shakara. Madison Wilson. Welcome, Madison. Now on to the class of 2024, starting with Abrar Ahmed. Welcome, O'Brien. <laughs> Maram Al Jabri. Welcome, Maran. <laughs> Sydney Alator. Welcome, Sydney. Charlotte Calhoun. Welcome, Charlotte. <laughs> Owen Mitchell. Welcome, Owen. Brea Mohammed. Welcome, Freya. <laughs> Mary.
Mackenzie Scheid. Welcome, Mackenzie. <laughs> Lily Bachheim. Welcome, Lily. <laughs> Dawson Brown. Welcome, Dawson. <laughs> Rokia Muthana Munasa. Welcome, Rokia. Now for the class of 2025, Landon Abel. Welcome, Landon. Aiden Dershel. Welcome, Aiden. Harley Edwards. Welcome, Harley. <laughs> Eliana Foley.
Welcome, Eliana. Garrett Gruner. Welcome, Garrett. <laughs> Abigail Robinson. Welcome, Abigail. <laughs> Lydia Rogers. Lennon Swick. Welcome, Lennon. Claudel Wishmeyer. Welcome, Claudette. <laughs> Yasmin Zamzami. That was our final inductee. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that members in the Colorado High School chapter of the National Honor Society has, have been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of four qualities that serve as standards for the society members of the chapter. We'll now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with scholarship.
Scholarship denotes a commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend hours in reading and studying, knowing the lasting benefits of a cultivated mind. We should continue to learn even when formal education has ended, for human education ends only with the end of life. Knowledge is one great element in life which leads to the highest success, and it can be acquired in only one way, through diligence and effort. Learning furnishes the lamp by which we read the past, the torch guiding us to understanding the present, and the light that illuminates the future. Candidates have the charge to continually expand their world through opportunities in scholarship. Scholarship is to be created not by compulsion, but by awakening a pure interest in knowledge. Service. Service can be established in the routine of the day's work where many opportunities arise to help others both at school and in the community. A willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without monetary compensation or public recognition is the quality we seek in our membership and promote for the entire student body. We are committed to volunteering our time and talents to the creation of a better tomorrow. As Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Leadership. Leadership should exert a wholesome influence on the school. In taking initiative in the classroom and in school activities, the real leader strives to train and aid others to reach their common goals of success. The price of leadership is sacrifice, the willingness to yield one's personal interests for the interests of others. A leader has self-confidence and will go forward when others hesitate. No matter what power and resources may exist in a school, community, or nation, they are ineffectual without the guidance of a wise leader. Leadership is always needed. Thus, to lead is a meaningful and substantive charge to each of our members. As Jim Ron said, the challenge of leadership is to be strong but not rude, be kind but not weak, be bold but not bully, be thoughtful but not lazy, be humble but not timid, be proud but not arrogant, and have humor but without folly. Character. Character is the force within the individual that distinguish, distinguishes each person from others. It creates for each of us our individuality, our goodness, it is that without which no one can respect oneself, nor hope to attain the respect of others. It is this force of character that guides one through life, and once developed, goes steadily within. Character is achieved and not received. It is the product of constant thought and action, the daily striving to make the right choice. The problem of character is the problem of self-control. We must be, in reality, what we wish to appear to others, to be rather than to seem. By demonstrating such qualities as respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, caring, and citizenship, we may hope to prove by example that we value character. And as said by a former UCLA basketball coach, John Wooden, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. To complete the candle lighting ceremony, we will have the passing of the flame, where each member will have the candle lit denoting the four criteria of NHS and the unity of our chapter. After each candle is lit, please join me in reciting the National Honor Society Pledge around the back of the program. We ask all members, past and present, to join us for reciting the pledge. 
NH members, please rise. Please join me in reciting the pledge found in the back of the pamphlet. I pledge myself to uphold the high purposes of the National Honor Society, to which I have been selected. I will be true to the principles for which it stands and will maintain and encourage high standards of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. Thank you. You may be seated. And you can also blow out the candles. And now, please welcome our advisor, Mr. Stephens, who will be offering congratulatory remarks to the new members. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the parents and family members coming out tonight to support their children. Um, it's great to see such a nice crowd out here. And for those who will be having kids uh, um, return next year, well, we certainly welcome you back. I'd just like to, yes, the new inductees, great job in being admitted to the National Honor Society and hopefully uphold uh, the values of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. I'd just like to take a second to uh, once again acknowledge our two citizens of the year. Um, Charles has been a great member of our community I see that this is 20 years he's served as the VA here. He's a true hero. He served his country for 13 years. He came back here and served as a VA administrator. He's been a great father. He's been a great leader in the community. You might see him walking his dog every so often out there on Grand Street. And it's, been, it's great to have you today recognize one of our citizens. Jim, um, you've been a pillar at the school system for almost 50 years. I, uh, I was very pleased that we selected you as the Citizen of the Year for all your outstanding achievements. And if you look at, Jim's got a huge resume, and if you look at his resume for coaching, up until 2018, he had done everything possible that you could. He had state individual champions, regional champions, league champions, so on and so forth. And I was very pleased in 2018 when our state uh, boys won the track championship that year that Jim was able to participate that because that fulfilled his resume. Um, been just an outstanding member of the coaching staff and the teaching staff here for many years. So if you could, why don't we give another round of applause to our two citizens of the year. Sometimes public schools take some hits, um, and certainly that's been happening nationally, but tonight we're here to celebrate. 
a fine group of young people. Um, our NHS members are outstanding young ladies and young men who have been admitted into our chapter. They've been vetted thoroughly. We have a faculty council that looks at everything there is possible. And sometimes um, we get some criticism about being elitist, about maybe being an aristocracy, you know, things of bias and so on and so forth. But as a fact of the matter, these young ladies, young men are part of a meritocracy. They, long, they belong here. They have met all the different criteria that we have listed here, and you, you as parents should be very, very proud of them to be admitted as National Honor Society members. I just want to take a second and um, also uh, call out our, my, my officers. And uh, every year I'm very fortunate to have a fine group of young people to work with in the course of the year, and this year is no different. The two Cat sisters that have served as our historian and as our treasurer, they are fantastic young ladies, they're great students. The only little knock I would have on them is sometimes their sister spats would come over into NHS and in my, into my classroom. So, <laughs> uh, one time they were arguing over a band instrument and who had to take it down to the band room. But they're great young ladies and we're really, really fortunate to have them as our officers. Uh, Jillian Hover is our secretary and um, she does a lot of things, but the big, basic thing is she keeps attendance. And we do hold our members accountable for that. So, um, you know, that's been great to have her in that capacity. And, um, and she's a fine young lady. I'll say a little bit more about her in just a second. And then our, Steve, our, uh, our Vice President, Stephen Coble, and he's also a great young man. Um, I, uh, I really regret I didn't have him as a student this year. He is the kind of guy that just lights up a room when he comes. He's always been willing to uh, help out in any activity that we have. And if there was an award for NHS chapters whose officers had the best smiles, we would win. Um, I'm going to do this one more time. Uh, particularly Stephen and Julian, let's flash those smiles. Come on, one more time there. <laughs> so it's been great to have them. And our president, Ethan. Um, Ethan is a different type of leader. Uh, he came into NHS and he really looked at trying to transform it to a, to a certain degree. And all those, those different times, he had all these great ideas, and some of them came to fruition, and some of them didn't. But he saw the bureaucracy and inertia and those sort of things that come when you're part of an organization. But I can tell you this, he was always transforming, and he was always looking at making this organization, organization a product for good. That's the whole intent that he had. And I think that he's gonna continue doing that in his years later on. He's looking at um, uh, having uh, studying political science in college. And I think that he's always gonna be an agent for service and always gonna be an agent for change and it's gonna be for the good. I have an immense amount of respect for him. Uh, he's a great leader in his own right. And for those of you that attend some of the later ceremonies, like convocation and so on and so forth, I'm sure you'll be hearing about, uh, uh, about Ethan some more. So if you could join me and have a round of applause for our officers, I appreciate that. But you know what, kids? You didn't get here alone. Someone helped you on your journey. Who was that? Anybody can tell me. Oh, not Mr. Stevens. <laughs> okay, I'll take a little bit of credit. That's not who I meant. Your parents, right? Okay. And they didn't get, they didn't get to this position unless they had the fine parenting and leadership and caring of their parents. Okay. So, I'd like all parents of NHS members, please rise. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Actually, you guys stole my thunder. I was going to do something else, but that's OK. So thank you, parents, for coming. Thank you, family members, for coming. Uh, afterwards, um, we have some cake and punch that are available for you in the cafeteria. 
Um, members, please don't leave right away. We have a few things that we can clean up and many hands made light work. And once again, thanks for coming tonight and we're gonna turn it back over to Ethan. So every year for a fundraising activity, we do a cake auction where all the members are either asked to bake a cake or a baked good to auction off here at the high school. And each year we do two awards for that. We give one for the cake that made the most money, as well as the best themed cake, which is voted on by people that participate in the auction. So our recipient this year for the cake that generated the most revenue is Samuel Lahr. And our best theme cake winner is Rowan Atwain. Thank you all for attending our NHS induction ceremony. In just a moment, I'll ask all the members to come up and we'll take pictures first with everyone and then just with the new inductees, at which point um, everyone will be released to go get cake and take individual pictures if they want to with their families. <laughs> 